11 p.m., a typical work night for Luis Fernandez. Earlier today, some precious cargo arrived. It's been chilling on ice all day. In that box is a recently deceased, freshly packed human brain. About all we know is it's a male, it's in its 70s, and if it's not preserved within the next hour or so, its quality will start to decline. For the Harvard Brain Tissue Resource Center, also known as the Brain Bank, this is one of over 7,000 brains. It's by far the largest brain repository in the world, a veritable stockroom of intelligence, packing freezers and lining shelves. For more than 25 years, the Brain Bank has been collecting and doling brains out to neuroscientists looking to unlock their secrets. Each of these numbers represents a donor. Francine Bennis is the Brain Bank's director. To find more effective uh, cures, we simply have to study the brain. There's no other way around it. The problem is there are never enough normal brains to go around, and they're a necessity for science. The Brain Bank receives 300 or so brains each year, but only around 30 are considered normal. That means demand is high. I'm gonna go ahead and bisect the hemispheres now. First, Lewis separates left brain from right, preserves one half in formalin for later anatomical studies, then moves on to the other half. He removes all the critical parts, brain stem, hippocampus, amygdala, and precisely sections off the rest of it. This is just cortex here. I see. Just cortex. That's all. <laughs> The brain lab looks eerily like a kitchen, but it's not the spectacle one might expect. Finally, Lewis freezes away all the samples to keep the proteins and DNA fresh for genetic analysis. Then histologist Tim yeah. Wheelock takes over. This is an Alzheimer's brain. Just looking at it, we know something's wrong. This one's normal. A normal brain, on average, weighs about 1,400 grams. Just over three pounds. On Alzheimer's case, 800, 900. Less than two pounds. Actually shrinking. You've got neurons, billions of neurons dying. Now granted, scientists can do similar comparisons without the hassle of removing someone's brain. Brain scans like MRI and PET scans can tell us if the brain has shrunk. They can even watch it at work to show which areas of the brain have problems. But they can't do what Tim's doing now. This is what happens when melanoma gets into the brain. And that is to peer inside the brain cells. You can't do any research on the tissue because you really don't know what it is. For now, this is the only way to get those cells and the only way to fully understand what's really wrong or right with the human brain.